the intention of this series is to help you, to help every person in here, no matter what level you're on right now, to go to another level in your devotion to God, to learn how to desire to be devoted to God, to learn that it's not always a desire. Sometimes it's a discipline of being devoted. Y'all know sometimes we want to want to get in the presence of God. We want to pray. I don't want to do that. Sometimes you're not going to want to. And sometimes it's going to be a discipline of devotion. We're going to talk about through this series that it's going to have to be dedication. And then I'm going to give you practical application. Because the one thing I hate is people who get up here and tell you what you need to do. And they don't tell you how to do it. And so we will never do that at Transformation Church. If I spend um, any time, I'm going to spend more time telling you how to do it than what to do. Because if we can't apply this in our lives, it's of no- we literally just waste our time every Sunday. Okay? We want this to be applied to your life. And so let's talk about this word devotion real quick. Write that down if you're taking notes, devotion. It's a word that most of you have not said all year long. Think about the last time you used the word devotion in a sentence. Many of us don't use that word, but we are devoted to certain things. The word devoted has three primary, the definition of devotion has three primary components. Uh, It means that you are, that you love, are loyal and enthusiastic for a person, activity, or a cause. Love, loyalty, and enthusiasm for a person, activity, or a cause. Yell at me right now some of the things that you love are loyal to and are enthusiastic about. Come on, somebody. Sushi. Somebody said, my man, my man. Okay. What else are you? Football, golfing, coffee. Come on. What'd you say? Pokemon Go? What? Okay. Music. Now, now watch. Now watch. Many of us have those three components in many areas of our life. I think about this, football starts uh, today. And some of the men said, God is here. Like, okay, football starts today. And there are men that aren't devoted to taking a shower, aren't devoted to going to a job. But for the next 16 weeks, they are going to be devoted to watching some people they don't know none of them know you. You have their jersey. They don't have yours. Okay. They're going to be devoted to watching people play a game. Now, some of y'all will think about that, but some ladies are devoted to shopping. Y'all know when the sa- you know, right when it's about to go on sale. Like how many of y'all got things that you've been watching it go down? It's 50%, 65%, 75%. I'm coming back for the 80%. Like y'all know exactly when stuff is about to happen. Um, some of us are devoted to our children. Some of us are devoted to our marriage. And this is the thing that I want everybody to understand that a lot of preachers and pastors um, go too hard on this part of it. They say, you know what I'm saying? You devoted to things, but you only need to be devoted to God. No, 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 no. God just wants you to be devoted to him first. See, it's not that we can't be devoted to other things that we can't love, be loyal to, be enthusiastic about other things. But God is saying, I have to be in the first spot and then everything else can flow. He says, I'll even bless it. Matter of fact, I'll even add it to you. Matthew 6, 33 says, if you just seek first the kingdom, my interests, what I want, I will literally bring you football tickets, bring you a husband, be able to, I will do it, but you just have to make me priority. And many of us, we go after the things instead of the king. And so we get the results of being with things that's temporary and we don't get the benefit of having the king bless everything that we do. So what we're going to do through this series is walk through how we can be more devoted. And again, that's love, loyalty and enthusiasm. When I say love, that's not just a buzzword anymore. If you were here last week, you have a whole different perspective on what the word L-O-V-E means. We have to learn about God, obey God, verbalize our love for God, and then evolve. We have to change. When we talk about we love you, God, that is not just a word that we say in songs. That is an action word from this point on. And so we need to love God more. The other thing is we need to be loyal to him. And this is, let me use another word. 
We have to be faithful to him. We have to be in relationship with him consistently. I don't know how many people in our day and age try to have relationships with people and, and they, they, they call it just being friends. Okay, some of y'all old school don't know nothing about this. But, but for the young people, y'all know, like, it's like we just friends. And what that really means is that we want to do everything like we're loyal to each other. But at the moment that it crosses the line of my comfortability, I can back out because we're just. And so what happens to it, it kills the key ingredient to a successful relationship with this being faithful, which is being loyal, which is continuing to communicate and have allegiance to the same person. And um, that's what God wants for us. He just says, I want you to be faithful to me. I want us to be able to have communication and I want to know we're going to talk today, but we not the next time we're going to talk is not a month from now. We're, we're going to see, see, when you're just friends, I can talk to you today and not even think about you for another year and then when I need you that's when I call and they'd be like well what happened I thought you and it's like yeah <laughs> it ain't even all that remember we just friends what God is saying he wants to be more than just a friend to you he wants to be somebody who is consistent with you and you are consistent with him and that means we have to be loyal to communicating with God the other part of that is enthusiastic enthusiasm excitement do you get enjoyment out of being with God? See, these are things that people don't usually talk about because it pushes buttons on all of our radars. The one talking, the pastor, the, one, the man of God is up here saying, you know what? I have to go to another level in my devotion. I don't want anybody to think that we, anybody in this room has arrived because God goes from grace to grace and glory to glory. We all have levels to go to. So I want everybody to understand if you're not at this level right now of devotion where you love God, you're enthusiastic about it, you're loyal to him, it's okay. That's why you're here and that's why I'm here because I want to help you. By the end of this series, you are going to know practically how you can be better devoted to God. Is it going to take something of you? Yeah. But is the end result better than what you're experiencing now? I promise you it is. And so I want everybody in this room to be devoted to God. And let me say it like this. If you are a Christ follower, a.k.a. a Christian, you are supposed to be devoted to God. That's what God expects of us. But he doesn't just leave us out here and say, be devoted to me, love me, keep my commands, do all this other stuff, and just leave us in this place. He helps us every step of the way. And so the question I want you to ask yourself right now, not out loud, but after I tell you what devotion is, ask yourself, am I devoted to God? And give yourself an answer. Okay, you don't got us, some of y'all heads starting to move. Don't move your head, don't let your neighbor know. But I want you to know because we don't all have to be aware, but you have to be self-aware. God can never move you from a place you don't acknowledge you're at. And so I want you to acknowledge where you're at right now. You know what? I could grow in my devotion. You know what? I feel like I'm doing pretty good, but I could keep going to the next. Level. Wherever you're at, I want you to know, because I promise you, if you listen to the word and stay a part of this series the whole way, God is going to take you to a whole nother level in your devotion to him. And when I say devotion, I'm not talking about a religious ritual. I'm talking about relationship responsibility. I don't tell my wife I love her out of ritual. Babe, I love you today. Babe, you are lovely. I love you today. That's ritual. And that's what many people do in their relationship with God. It's Sunday. Got to go to church. Why? Because <laughs> I got to. I got to praise. I got to pray. I got to worship. I got to see. The Bible says don't forsake. But there's no life in there. There's no love in that. There's no real enthusiasm about that. And God said, you can just keep that that's not exciting to me. I remember one time where I gave my wife a gift that was kind of forced, like, I, like she basically laid every crumb trail for me to get her this gift. And then finally I was like, here, babe, here's the gift. And she was like, take it back. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> not after all that work, not after all that. She said, you didn't even want to do it. You did it because it's what I asked for, but you didn't even 
want to do it. May it be that many of our lives, when we're saying we're devoted to God, is not what we want to do, it's what we feel like we have to do. Come on, let's be real. I want to take that out of the equation. I want to worship in a church where it's people who want to worship God, not who are forced to. And many times, churches and pastors and denominations have tried to control us by telling us what we have to do or this is going to happen. What I'm saying to every person in this place that God loves you so much that he's already proven it to you by sending his son. And now he wants you to respond to it. And the proper response is love, but it's love continually. It's not at a moment. It's continually. So we have to get devoted to God. So when we think about this, this is not about perfection. This is about progression. So all of us are going to continue to move forward. And for a lot of you, this is a season of reevaluating because there was a season where you were more devoted to God, but then seasons change. Have you ever been in a season and you didn't realize that the seasons changed? Like some of y'all went outside um, in shorts and, and then you realize, hold on, it's fall out here and your, your knees is ashy and stuff is changing because it, it changed on you, but you didn't change with the season. Many of us in our devotions lives, we haven't recognized the season chain. Like I used to be so devoted before the business blew up. Or before we had these kids, I always had my prayer time on lock. Or you know what? I mean, I really loved worshiping God, but since I got this new school schedule or work schedule, it just seems like, and many times we don't realize that our seasons are changing. This is the thing that we have to realize, and it is a truth that you have to be able to be aware of, that even though life changes, your connection with God can never change. I want to help you because this is where we get to places like, how in the heck did I get down here in this situation? Because we stopped connecting to God. One thing that God told me, he said, when I bless you, don't stop coming to me. When, when, Cause you know, when you desperate, when everybody done left you, when it's just you and God, you just sitting there rocking. Oh God, it's just me and you. I love you, father. You're a good, good daddy. You sing all your own words. You're praying. You're showing up to devotion on time. You're watching sermons online. You're doing all these other things. And then when you get the breakthrough, oh, am I the only one? When you get the breakthrough, it's like, thanks, daddy. <laughs> I'm blessed, blessed. Like I'm in this whole nother world where I don't need to be connected to God anymore. And that's what happens when we're not devoted, when it's not a consistent thing, when it's based on our circumstance or our need. And what I'm saying is, yes, we do have circumstances and we do have needs, but it's much easier to always be connected to the source than to have to always come back to the source, okay? And so that's what this series is about. Um, I, I want everybody to see how I'm about to do this because we titled the series Charged Up. And um, basically, I want to use this whole series as a teaching how Jesus would do it. If you ever studied the teachings of Jesus, he would use parables, and metaphors of the time to be able to explain um, big truths in simple ways because people would know how to relate. So he would always use farming um, examples like reaping and sowing. That wasn't just because he wanted you to understand reaping and sowing. It's because the people back then were farmers, so they understood reaping and sowing. So if he was giving it now, he would talk probably technology because all of us use technology. So that's what I'm going to do in this series. We're going to use um, technology to be able to bring a big truth and make it very simple of how we're supposed to connect to God. So if you have a smartphone, I want you to pull it out right now. Get it out your purse if you have a smartphone. If you have a dumb phone, go ahead and pull that out as well. A remedial phone, whichever <laughs> phone that you do have, I want you to pull it up. And once you pull it up, I want you to put it in the air right now. Come on, put it in the air. If you got your smartphone, okay, then I want you to wave it around. Here we go. Wave it up in the air. I said, wave it like you just don't care. If you pay your bill and you got service, let me hear you say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Some of y'all don't pay y'all bill. Your mom pays your... No, I'm just playing. Okay. Now, this phone, your smartphone, 
is about to become an instrument that God is going to minister to you through for the next about four weeks. God has started to download to me analogies of how these things work and what we're supposed to use these things for that are going to help us understand staying connected to God. So I want you to prophesy to your phone right now. I want you to say, phone, phone. speak, speak. To, me. to me. I'm listening. I'm listening. Now put it up to your ear and say, hello. <laughs> okay, I'm just playing. Okay, so, but I'm telling you, you're going to start getting revelation through this charged up series that's going to speak to you when I'm nowhere around. And God's about to show you something. That phone in this series represents you. Okay? Your phone represents you. That phone was created by a creator. Apple, Sony, HTC, Samsung, whatever you got. You were created by a creator. That phone was created with purpose. You were created with purpose. Before he formed you in his mother's womb, he knew you. He had plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope in a future. You have purpose. Somebody say, I have purpose. I have purpose. Even if the purpose never is fulfilled, you were created with purpose. Okay. Just like this phone, you were beautifully and wonderfully made. Come on, the phones today, does anybody remember them first brick phones? And then how many remember the Nokias that you played snake on? You understand what I'm saying? Those were ugly phones. Look at the phones that are created now. Distinct in their, their um, dimensions and the, all the different things that are happening. They were created beautifully and wonderfully. Just like you, these phones, every single one of these phones has the ability to touch the world. On the inside of every one of these phones, I can call South Africa right now. Do you know that there is the potential on, in the inside of you? That God has placed something on the inside of you that can literally go around this world and touch the entire globe. That's in you. This phone, as well as you, is full of potential. Do you know the things a phone can do today? You can exchange stock. You can call a car, you can plan a business meeting, you can literally take pictures and create videos for your family. There is literally endless options of potential that you can do with your phone. Do you know that's the same thing with your life? Endless potential. So much inside of you that you've never even tapped on. How many people have apps on their phone that they've never used? Look at you. There's things on the inside of you that have never been tapped before. There are things that are waiting to revolutionize the, the way that you are effective, but it's not been even touched yet. Just like your phone, you were chosen. Every one of us chose the phone that we have. Just like God chose you. And he called you joint hairs and he called you my chosen people. And just like that phone, you were bought with a price. Ooh, don't make me preach this in here. <laughs> Nobody has a phone that was free. Even if they told you it was free, you're paying it in your contract. <laughs> they tricked you. <laughs> But there was a price that was prayed when Jesus came to this earth to save us all. We were bought with a price. So when you look at your phone and you look at your life, there's so many other parallels. And we could literally, I could spend the next 20 minutes drawing parallels. But this is what I want to talk about today. Is that no matter how much your phone can do how much potential it has, no matter how much it can change everything around you, that phone is of no use unless it hooks to a power source. I want you to understand that the same is applicable for your life, that everything that you want to do, the potential that God has placed on the inside of you to touch the entire world, the things, the creativity, all of the things that you feel when you go to sleep and you wake up with, it is of null and void if you do not connect.
to the power of God. So today, the title of the message is Power Source. Power Source. I want everybody to get connected to God. And I want us to realize that we will only be able to have limited effectiveness in whatever we're doing until we truly and continually plug into the power source. Somebody say power source. Power source. Have you ever been somewhere and you were at the moment of doing something very crucial and your phone went dead? Yes. I mean, there's a few that are worse than others though. Like when you're getting directions through uh, maps or Google Maps or Siri and you've never been to the place before and you're following it and literally right before you get there, the phone dies. And literally now you're praying, you're like, Lord, be my GPS. Jesus, take the wheel because I do not know how to get to this place. Or what about when you're at your child's or your grandchild's recital and you've been recording all these horrible kids singing and now your person about to get up there and right when they open up their mouth, Jesus, and then it falls and your phone goes dead. That's devastating. Or what about when you and your loved one are in a, let's call it um, heated communication and y'all are about to hit the resolve and you send a very long text message that has all your heart in it and right, y'all know what I'm talking about, and right before you hit sin, the battery dies. Every one of those situations and circumstances are what we call devastating. Because until I find a power source to connect to, all of the potential that was about to be created is completely stopped. The question is, what do we do to go get a power source? Many of us have tons of them just sitting everywhere. How many people have a charger in your car? Okay at your house, by your bed, on your living room. Some of y'all got portable chargers. Some of y'all get Mophies. Y'all know what those are. It's like a charger inside the case. We walking around because we cannot let this phone die. I think about that in our lives. And are some of us trying to do functions like marriage, work a job, raise kids, go to school, live pure lives, but we're running on no charge. And it's crazy because you can act like you're doing something on the phone when nothing's happening. And many people are holding their devices. No power. Many people are going through life. No power. Today I want you to connect to the source. And this is what I want you to know, point one, is that every person in here, you need power to live this life. You need power to live this life. Life is real. I don't know your personal situations, but all of us deal with real situations in our life. From our families, to our jobs, to our purpose, to our careers, and life is real. We deal with comparison, we deal with sin, we deal with all kinds of stuff that we need the power of God to help us deal with. And many of us are drained. If I was really to talk to you one on one without everybody around and talk to you about what are the things that are feeding you and what are the things that are draining you. A lot of us are drained. Doing the work of the ministry can drain you. Being a mother, a father, working that job, doing these things can drain you. How many of you have an area of your life right now that is draining you? Let's be honest. An area of your life. Listen, that's life. And see, there's no real cute a uh, 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 story or poem or just scripture I can give you to because everybody wants life to go away but Jesus was so dope with it that he wanted us to see everything that we would deal with coming so he said in this life you will have trouble <laughs> but take courage because I've already overcome the world so I want everybody to know that life is real but God is realer if that if I can say it like that He's already overcome the situations that are, have gone on in your life, but now we have to plug in to the source. 
the power source. And so who is the power source? Point number two. I'm going to be very elementary in this so you can get it. The power source is God. God is your power source. Why are you saying that, Pastor Mike? Because we try to make other things our power source. You try to make people your power source? Come on. I just need them to encourage me. I just need them to affirm me. I just need them to give me a position. I just need another job title. I just need, and we're trying to get enthusiastic. We're trying to get, get what we need to get to feel like we can continue to go from somebody who doesn't even have the capacity to fund us with the power. Some of us try to get our power from our marriage. And we're supposed to be giving to that thing, but we don't have anything to give. Some of us are trying to get powered by pop culture. What Wayne is doing, what Nikki's doing, what the Kardashians are doing, what this, this gives me identity, this gives me purpose. I'm in your house because it's real. And what happens is that we find out that those things try to give us a little pep, but it doesn't keep us going. But what God's saying is if you would ever get the audacity to consistently and continually plug into me. I will be the power source that will never, ever run dry. I will be the thing that when you plug into me, it will begin to change the way that you operate, that you move, that you function, how efficient you are. That's what God wants to be to you. He wants to be your power source. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. I want you to understand that in this life, those things that come to drain you, that on top of all of that, the enemy comes to drain you. That's what it says in John 10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy or drain you. But Christ came that we might have life and life more abundantly to the full, another translation says, charged up. There's nothing like seeing your battery with 100% in that little green uh, um, battery. Why? Because you know you can go off of that charge. What God says is I did not come for you to live a half full life or a low battery life. I came to, for you to live charged up. I came to keep you continually supplied with what you need to live this life. And that's why he said that I came that you might have life, not exist. See, most of us say God came so that I might exist and exist more abundantly. Many of us have not started living. We've just been existing. And God says, I want you to change. I want you to be full. I want you to be charged up. But you got to connect to the power source. First Peter, I mean, second Peter, chapter one, verse three. Let's find out who the power source is. It's God. It says his divine power. Whose divine power? God's his. So he is a power source all to himself. Now it gets sweeter. He says his divine power has given who? Us. Uh oh, now God is giving us an opportunity to plug into the power that he has. Look at it. He's given us the, everything we need for a godly life. That should be encouragement to everybody in this room. Oh my God, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. God's saying, I'm a power source that I, through what I've done on the cross, I've given you, made available to you every thing that you need to live this life, to stay charged up, to live it to the full. Look at it. And it says, through the knowledge of Kim who called you or called us by his own glory and goodness. When we get saved, let me just break this down. When we get saved, we get an unlimited access to power. When you say, Christ, I'm putting my faith in you. Now you get access to power. Somebody shout power at me. Power. Okay. I want you to see this so clearly because access to power does not mean that you plugged in. Hear me. Many people can have access to something but never use it. When you get saved, you get access to the power. But are you using it? Give an example. Me and my wife, we remodeled a home. And before we owned the home, I used to break into the home to dream. 
I just told on myself. They left the door a little unlocked, so I go in there all the time, pray all over it, look at where stuff was going to be. And there was no power in the house. Um, and when we actually p- purchased the house, I went down to AEP and I made a decision and I paid a price. And then I was able to receive power to the house. Kind of like our Christian walk, when we make a decision to believe Jesus Christ is Lord, then, and, we, and there was something paid, Christ paid the bill, then we get the ability to receive power. So now power's coming to the house. But it's not until I take something and plug it into it that I get to see the benefits of the power that I have access to. I want everybody to realize what I'm saying to you. Many of you and many Christians have access to the power of God, but we have not plugged into it. Point blank period, coming to church is not um, the thing that's going to plug you into the power source. It'll get you enthusiastic about it. It'll be a, be a good Kickstarter, but it's what you do tomorrow. It's what you do on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday that makes the transfer be able to happen. This is why I want you to understand very clearly as we're starting this series, and I'm just laying the foundation for you today to understand that we're going to plug into something that is strong, that is able to handle our situations. God is our power source. Do you know this power source was here before us? It's been here before us and it'll be here after us. That's why the word says it like this in John 1 1. It says in the beginning the word already existed. It was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God is the power source that's going to help you handle your job, your family, your marriage, your sin issues, your wrong habits. He's the power source. So we have to plug into him. And so this is what I want you to know as I talk about the source today, because the rest of these weeks, I'm going to tell you how we're going to plug in the different connections and all those different things. But I just want to give you three attributes of God's power. The first one is that God's power is dependable. God's power is dependable. You need to know this because many of us are scared to really give our lives fully over to God because we don't know if it'll work. I hear that more than it, oh, I tried before and it just didn't work out the right way. Or, you know what I'm saying? I really want to give this a shot. And what God is saying to all of us is my word and my power is dependable. Look at Hebrews chapter one, verse three. It says the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. What God is saying to you is everything you've experienced in this life, I'm sustaining with the word that I spoke. Do y'all know in the beginning, God spoke, let there be light. Do you know that the sun is still being sustained by the word that was spoken by God? It's dependable. Do you know when he said, I'm going to form man in my image and I'm going to breathe? Do you know you're created because God spoke a system of creation into place and it's sustaining everything right now? I need you to recognize that the power of God in your life is dependable. It's more dependable than the banking system. It's more dependable than your family. It's more dependable than who's going to be the president of the United States. The power of God is, everybody say, dependable. Dependable. And this is what it says. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Jesus was so cold with it that he said, listen, I'm going to make sure they have access to this power. Then I'm going to sit down. Because everything they need to live this life, they can have if they just connect to God. I'm I'm done doing work. I died once, I ain't dying again. I am finished with this. That's why he said at it, it is finished. It's done. They got access to power. All they need to do is receive what I've already paid for, and they need to plug into the power source. Does everybody, somebody say plug into the source. That's why Isaiah 48, 40 Um, Verse 8 says, the grass withers and the flowers fall. Said things change, but the word of our God endures forever. It's 
dependable. Yes. Psalms 1830 says, as for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. I just want you to understand that as we go through this process of getting charged up, plugging into God is the most dependable thing that you could ever do. What do you mean plugging into God? Reading your word, praying, worshiping, being devoted, displaying your love, displaying your loyalty, being enthusiastic. It's the most dependable thing that you could put your effort and energy into because it will never fail. God says, I'm looking for my word to perform it. I'm looking for people who are plugged into the source so that I can bring to pass the things they are believing me for. Pastor Mike, why are you going so hard on this devotion and plugging into the source and knowing what God is? Because I want you to understand that when you really, really, really understand how much God can do for you, you won't go looking for other things to plug into. Many of us go to alcohol and drinks and parties and, and money and all these things trying to fulfill something that only God can empower in us. So I want you to hear me say this. God's power is dependable. The second thing, God's power is transferable. This is the awesome thing about the power of God. It's not that he's sitting there saying, I'm all powerful. Worship me. I am the powerful God of the universe. He said, you know what? I got to give this to you because I'm up here in heaven and everything's already taken care of. But I know what you're dealing with there on earth. So I need you to have the same power, the divine nature, the ability to be able to go when my flesh wants to do something that's wrong and I need to do something that's right. I need you to have the power to be able to do that. And I know it's not in you. So I'm going to transfer my power to you. Watch this. Look at the rest of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It says, by his divine power, he's given us everything we need to live this godly life through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Look at verse 4. Through these, he has given us his great and precious promises. That is the word of God. That is the Bible. So that through them, okay, so through the word, we can participate. We can be able to have the same thing that he has in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Let me help you understand this. God says, I got power right here. You need power over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a line that connects from my power source to you. Every one of our devices has to have some type of cable to be able to go from the power source to the device. Some of us USB chargers, some of us um, lightning bolt chargers. I don't care what it is, but you have to go from the power source to the device. What God says is I got power, divine power. You need power, divine power. I'm going to give you the connection and it's the word of God. That's what this just says. He says, when you need power, he said, you connect to my word and I will give you the ability through my word, the great and precious promises to participate in my divine nature. That's why the enemy fights you so hard for getting in the word of God. I, I'm trying to give you the secret to life. I don't like reading the Bible. I just can't find time. to. And that's why you're so depleted in every area of your life. Because that is how you connect to power that does not come in this flesh suit. How do I stand up against this girl who's just coming and passing my she bad in every area? I mean, she's just like, mm, 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 mm. she popping everywhere. And God, I just want to bless her and touch her and lay hands on her, God. And I just don't know what to do. God says, I got the divine power to make you be able to not do that. But you sitting over here saying, Jesus, please, Jesus, please, Jesus, please. He said, you need to get the right connection. When you get into the word, he then transfers his divine power. How are you going to go to that job every day and deal with them crazy people that you get connected to the power source? And through the word of God, he's going to transfer divine power. Guess what his divine power, how it comes out in the fruits of the spirits? Love, joy, peace, patience. Kind of, do you understand that you don't get that by wishing for it? I can sit here and wish my phone to charge up all day. Lord, please just let it come back on. God, I just wish. God, you know I got to make phone calls. But until 
I connect it to the power source. God's power is transferable to you, but it only transfers through his word. I'm going to teach you in other weeks how to really start loving the word of God. See, this I'm a pastor. I don't want to just tell you stuff and then say, go out and try it. I want to give you the truth, but I want to help you be able to do it. Guys, the things that God's called you to, the potential he wants you to see out, the people you're supposed to change, the songs you're supposed to write, the books that are supposed to touch the world, the impact, the cures for diseases, all of those things are not going to happen in the way that we want them to happen until we plug into the power source. I'm a living witness that God will wreck your dreams for his purpose. He'll wreck your dreams for his purpose. But how do you deal with that if you're not connected to the source? See, what's going on inside of us, what's internal drains us. My thoughts, worry, frustration. Come on, some of us have these things. If I just say, my flesh, it'll drain me. Okay? I will have no power to do anything. But what's in him What's in the power source? It empowers me to live. So if you don't hear anything else, I want to say that God's power is dependable. And God's power is transferable. You don't have to speak in tongues to get the power of God. Some say, well, I don't act like this. I don't look like this. Open up your Bible and allow the living word of God to be, well, I don't feel nothing today, but something inside of you is starting to move. Y'all know that when you first put it on the charger, you can't do stuff. On my Apple, it just shows the Apple sign. It's just letting you know that you're connected. It's letting you know that something is going in and you can't use all the functions yet. But I promise you, if you stay plugged in long enough, if you stay plugged in long enough, your functionality is going to begin to change. Things are going to begin to move. Things that used to run slow are going to run faster. So you have to know that by his divine power, the power source has everything that we need to live this life godly. He says, but the only way you get the power is through the word. And I'll transfer my power to you as you connect to me. The last thing I want you to hear me say very clearly is God's power is available. It's dependable. It's transferable. But most importantly, it's available. I want you to hear me say this. God's power is available to you wherever you are right now. Well, Pastor Mike, you don't know what I'm going through. His power is available to you. I'm in the hardest season of my life. His power is available to me. Well, I'm living an alternate lifestyle. His power is available for you if you would just plug into him. See, many people try to plug in and change themselves and try to generate power out of their own selves, trying to be solar powered out there, trying to get power by the sun. And no, listen, just plug into God. I love hotels that are newly remodeled. That's like my thing. Like I, like I'm, I look on the reviews, like when was it updated? One of the reasons I do that is because when you go into those hotels, they now have started incorporating USB ports everywhere so like when you walk into the hotel room I went into one hotel room there was 15 USB ports for me to plug in one by my nightstand one in the bathroom well I mean they were everywhere and I was just like oh my god you know what the sad thing about it is my phone still went dead in that hotel room because the power was available but I never plugged in you can come to church. You can hear the song. I mean, it is available. But have you plugged in? Look at this last scripture in 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy. I want you to see this. And this sounds kind of like where we're at in the world today. It says, but mark this. There will be a terrible time in the last days where people will be lovers of themselves, lover of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, 
without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They're not devoted. Having a form of godliness, but denying his. What is that word? Have nothing to do with such people. This is the word of God. He's saying there's a day coming where it's going to be available everywhere. But people would rather be consumed with themselves than consumed with plugging into the power. And they're going to fake it, too, because they know they need the power. So what they're going to do is they're going to present a form of godliness. Yeah. Look at my phone. It's just sleeping right now. It's just sleep. It still work. Hello? No power. I don't want that to be the testimony for anybody in this room. That we would have the power of God available to help us live this life, the abundant, full, charged up life, and we never plug into the power source. This series is going to step by step help you plug into the power source and make it so real for you. Not anybody. This is not the series for your neighbor. This is a series for you because God wants you to be devoted to him. Amen. There is nothing that he would withhold from you. If he knows that you're always connecting to him. 